And I'm like, honey, what's in this web? And she's like, well, dad, there's 14 midges in a caddis fly. And like <laughs> a proud daddy, and I'm drying my tears. I'm like, oh, honey. <laughs> 400,000 flies? Yeah, yeah, I got a very understanding wife. That's about 99% of the life of the bugs that trout eat, right. and about 80% of where trout are feeding. Let's see, that's good information because I always thought that you put this over your head for mosquito net. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're saying is don't parking lot rig. No, no, not if you want to catch fish, right? <laughs> That behavior tells me they're done with the nymph on the bottom of the river and they're following that food to the surface. They're following an emerger. All right, guys, welcome to the Gritty Angler Podcast. We are coming live from Colorado, somewhere really high elevation. What is this, the Baca Lodge? Baca Lodge. Terry All Outfitters. Terry All Outfitters, that's right. I think we're sitting at almost 10,000 feet. Yep, I think, the, I think the lodge sits right at 10. And our guest is Peter Stitcher from Ascent Fly Fishing, and my co-host Dwayne Sessions, the beard. Yeah. The beard, fear the beard. <laughs> so we did a little fishing last night. First guide freeze up of the year. It was cold. What, like yeah. 13, 11, something like something that. Something like that. It was. Yeah. It was chilly. Fish weren't having it. No, they weren't. It was really. We were cold. hopeful, and it just. We got our butts out. kicked. Yeah, we did. <laughs> We got we got handed it, and I think we'd get like three or four casts in before the guides would freeze up. And, yeah, I was fun though. We had the river to ourselves at least, right? Pretty much, pretty much. Yeah, we're gonna get back out today after we podcast. I think this is officially the earliest in the day I've ever done a podcast. <laughs> we were up at six o'clock this morning, mm -hmm. had breakfast, and now we're recording a podcast before we hit the river. But this is good because Peter's going to teach us some things about matching the hatch. He's going to teach us about bugs. All right. And pulling out the right bugs so we can not get our butts kicked again. Man, I'll, yeah, hopefully I can redeem myself from, uh, from yesterday. <laughs> so, Peter, just a uh, brief introduction. Give us a little bit about you, you your background, yeah. and Ascent fly fishing. Because what you guys do at Ascent, I think, is really, really cool. And it can help all of us become better anglers and catch more fish. I like to say we, we sell the smartest flies on the water. And uh, we're, we're a bunch of geeks out of sense. So I'm, a, I'm an aquatic biologist. And uh, what we do is a little different than most shops is folks tell us when and where they're fishing. Somewhere in the U.S. You know, the, the beavers kill in New York, the bighorn, uh, the Deschutes. And uh, exactly when. And we'll go into our database of bugs. And we... Uh, with 400,000 flies at our disposal, we'll mix and match and match down to the life cycle. 400,000 flies? Yeah, yeah. I got a very understanding wife. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dude, you are a, a geeky, buggy dude. Yeah, and uh, but it, it pays off. You know, if uh, you take the guesswork out, all you got to do is net the fish. When did you start Ascent, or how did that come to be? Because you're an aquatics biologist. Right. You went to school and... Yeah, so I went to school at Oregon State and moved out to uh, Colorado to manage private water. And I had some fishing buddies like, hey, what's happening on, on this section of the blue, do you think? And I'm like, well, I built that section. So these are the bugs and this is what's there. And I think you should fish this. And it started catching a lot of fish. And I realized, man, there's, there's a need there. So I uh, started tying flies with a bunch of buddies from school and um, grew and grew to the point that, I mean, now we got our own factories and we do like 10,000 bugs a week is what we're wrapping right now. Dwayne, you fished some of his flies? I do. I actually, I fish a lot of Peter's flies. Um, you know, we met, I don't know, it wasn't too long after you got started and, uh, we do a fishing trip up to Nebraska every year and, and, uh, I have, I have Peter packing stuff every year to go up there and, and we, uh, we kill it. Well, and you were telling me your prices, and they're a lot yeah. less than what I pay at some stores I buy flies at. So right. How do you keep your costs so low? So, I mean, we, uh, we, we have our own factory. Um, so we got 30 full-time tires. I source all the materials here. I mean, the, the elk hides come from South Park. So when we shoot an elk hide, it gets tan, and it goes to my guys to tie. Um, hackles come from Delta, Colorado, and... Uh, you take out all the middlemen and you can give, you know, an honest price to, to anglers and yeah, it's uh 
I mean, I want to make the knowledge accessible, but also the price. Like, this isn't a one percenter sport. That's why you've been scoping out some elk here while we've been fishing. That's right. Well, you need some of, more elk here for your right. fly. But it's a, it's. I mean, the thing is, it's you know, it's it's not like you know, you there's there's some places online that you can go and you can buy cheap flies, right. and you know, in in that case, you definitely do get get what you paid for. But um, what Peter puts out there, I mean, it's 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 solid material. Yeah, we're we're pretty OCD about the science and the and the flies. <laughs> so you were telling me a story when you started your business. You 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 work out of your house, or you started out of your house, right. but you were putting up thousands of posters around your neighborhood and so, yeah. the city you live in. Yeah, so we were kind of dodging uh, dodging the city uh, ordinance people, and uh, yeah, I mean it's a gritty startup story, and you. Know, you you have an idea, you start in your garage and you, how you get people over there is you put out signs. So we had about a, maybe about 150 yard signs, all hand painted, super gritty. And I put those out like a fly on the water within like a four mile radius of my place. It took three hours to put them out. And uh, it became such a part of like Denver culture that I met a new client last week and he's like, I dressed up as one of your signs for Halloween last year and everybody in the neighborhood <laughs> knew exactly what it was. So yeah, when we get our, our, our brick and mortar and we'll have one framed up there. That's how it started. Yeah. The city of Denver was really happy with you. Huh? Yeah, that's right. Just so yeah, we do a pop-up fly shop. So we, as long as we keep moving, they can't nail us down. <laughs> so 400,000 flies. How do you go about compiling a database like that? Right. So what we do when we're matching the hatch is it's based on hard science. What's been seen in these rivers, in these regions, at this elevation. And so when I ask a client or when they get on the website and they choose biologist crafted selection, they answer seven questions about what's their skill level. I mean, if they're starting out fresh, I'm going to try to get them flies that can match more hatches with a few go-to patterns. If they've been in it for 20 years, I'm going to, I'm going to get in deep kind of a hundred foot view on their water. Um, they tell us the seasons and, and I'm extrapolating everything from water temperatures and elevation and turnover and the species of trout and their spawning temperatures and their feeding behavior. And, you know, I look at the river, like Neo looks at the matrix, you know, I just see like all the lines and dots and we do all the geeky stuff and uh, yeah, they just get the right flies. Yeah, I noticed that when we were fishing last night, you kind of went about things a little differently than I do, you know, from testing the water temperature, you know, lifting up rocks, seeing what's going on, even looking at the foam layer, what's in there above yeah. the water level. Yeah. Um, when you decide you're going to go fish somewhere, how do you approach it? So the river has, it's like a, it's like a puzzle and there's puzzle pieces kind of scattered around in the bushes and, and in the air and on top of the water and under the water. And if you're going to be successful as a fly fisher, you need to learn how to kind of pull those together and assemble them in your fly box to choose the best flies. Right. Um, so, uh, yeah, we, uh, we've coined kind of a method called the pause method. It's P A U S E. And those five points, or where that menu's written on the river. I mean, do you want me to kind of share kind of that process? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Explain and define what pause is. Yeah. So um, the first thing we do is sampling starts on the drive to the river. So um, P stands for parking lot to the river. That's where we're getting our first puzzle pieces. So we're looking at our windshield. We're looking at the grill of the truck. I mean, are there grasshoppers stuck on your grill? Are there mayflies on the window? I mean, that's a good indication of, you know, some stuff that might be happening on the river. Mm -hmm. um, walking from the parking lot to the river, then we're listening as much as we're looking. Um, do you hear cicadas chirping, you know, on your way to the green? Do you hear uh, the wing beats of grasshoppers taking off on the trail? I mean, those are good indicators of this is all dry fly information that we're getting on the way to the river. Um, once you get to the side of the river and you're pushing through the willows, are we kicking off big swarms of caddisflies? Are we seeing the shucks of stoneflies? Again, this is all dry fly information. Yeah. Uh, a stands for above the water. And at a glance from, from 50 yards away, just from the way that the bugs are flying, you can tell if it's a mayfly, caddisfly, or a stonefly. Uh, Most people probably could. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what we're looking for, like mayflies have a very even <clears throat> wave-like motion. And uh, I mean, that's unique unto themselves. And if you got a well-organized box, you can go right to your mayfly road, just seeing that flight. Um, and uh, caddisflies, totally chaotic. Like a ADHD kid drinking Mountain Dew. I mean, they're off the wall. That's your caddisflies. Okay. And then stoneflies are very even, straightforward, kind of a helicopter-like flight. So we're looking above the water. We're looking for swallows ducking and diving, and that tells us there's a hatch in progress. Um, and we're fishing dry flies potentially. Okay. Um, under the water is, I think, where most... Uh, and that's you. Yeah, you is under the water. That, that's the single most important point of information. That's about 99% of the life of the bugs that trout eat. Right. And about 80% of where trout are feeding. Um, so, like, using a seine is a, is a super, you know, effective tool for pulling the menu out of the water. Mind if I show you how it's... Yeah, for guys not familiar with a seine, uh, explain what this is and how you'd use it. Yeah, so a seine is a, a little fine mesh net that goes over your landing net. And uh, we're going to stick that down into the bottom of the river. And we're going to, you know, sample where trout are doing most of their feeding. And this is, again... I mean, if you don't have your sand on the river, you, you might as well, you know, it's like forgetting your reel. It's that important. Um, so what happens is you just get your kind of standard landing net and the sand just slips over the basket of that net. And then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go out into the riffles. So the riffles are kind of that fast, steeper section of water where it's really mixing and cascading, losing elevation. And that's the home to the greatest like density of bugs, the greatest diversity of bugs. So you get your best sample there. And then facing up into that current, we're gonna take our seine, push it down against the bottom of the river, and up just upstream of that, in that first couple feet, we're gonna grind and kick and scrape with our feet, you know, scrape those rocks with our hands, really dig in, and we're gonna kick loose all those aquatic insects that are holding on tight. And they drift down into the net, when you pull this up, then this is like picking the, the menu up off the table at the restaurant. This yeah, is yeah. an exact That's the buffet. This is it. Yeah. So, you know, you can put your fly box down right next to that. And this is kind of information on the wet flies that are going to be effective. Let's see. That's good information because I always thought that you put this over your head for a mosquito net. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's when you're fishing up north. <laughs> yeah, right? In Alaska. In Canada. That's right. Yeah, but, I've seen mosquitoes big enough to carry your hat off almost. Okay, so that's you. Yeah, you. S is spider webs. So as you're walking the banks, um, spiders know exactly what's hatching on your water. And generally what's in a spider web is pretty fresh because they suck it dry and cut it loose. So if you can find a loaded spider web, I mean, my daughter... You know, she does this when she was four. We'd be walking the South Platte outside of Denver. And I'm like, honey, what's in this web? And she's like, well, dad, there's 14 midges and a caddis fly. And like a proud daddy, and I'm drying my tears. I'm like, oh, honey. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm like, what do we fish? And she's like, a Griffiths gnat, daddy. And I'm like, you're, you're right. And uh, That's yeah. how you know your dad is an aquatics biologist. That's right, when your four-year-old daughter can uh, match the hatch. But, yeah. But so spider webs are great. And that's all dry fly info, what's happening out of the water. And then the final part, that E, is edges and eddies. So as that river kind of wraps around into these little backwaters and, and side channels behind boulders, and that's like a black hole of bug collection. So in the foam on top, you got spent spinners and cases of recently hatched bugs. Um, and you got on the bottom of the river, you get these kind of collections of you know, aquatic insects that get kicked loose and aquatic worms. And yeah, those are the kind of the five points where we're assembling the pieces. Um, and so these tools, like this seine, mm -hmm. um, you guys sell these, obviously. We do. Yeah, so um, ascent fly fishing is kind of where the science meets the fly, where we put it in your fly box. River Oracle's our educational brand, and that's the match that has tools that helps you to interpret the information gather the the information so the sains the vials the things like that so guys can go on your website mm -hmm. ascentflyfishing.com yep and you've got all these tools and, and bits of information to help guys right. uh, match the hatch identify bugs and insects right 
Yeah. So after we get all the, the information, how do you choose the best pattern? I mean, it's great. Now we got all these little squirmy critters in our net. What do you do, right? Yeah, exactly. You pull up 150 different bugs in this net. How do you decide which one to fish? Exactly. Yeah. So we're doing a couple things. So we remember pause is where we're looking for the info. So we're going to say pause before you match. And match is going to be five more points then. How do we prioritize what we saw to which flies are going to be effective? So M is most abundant. I mean, that makes sense, right? What yeah. you're seeing the most of, that's what the trout are seeing the most of. So I'm looking in my net. Here's the menu. Well, man, I got two big golden stone nymphs. I got maybe three little, you know, green caddis larvae. And then there's 50, you know, little blueing olive nymphs. Well, I'm going to be given priority to what there's the most of. That's what the trout have the greatest opportunity to eat. So we're going to be looking at, you know, some, some mayfly nymph patterns. Um, we try to, you know, bring the signs to the fly all the time. So like on our site, every fly I have, I list the family species and life cycle of every fly. So it's like, what the hell is a parachute atoms? Well, this is every hatch that it can, it can be used to match. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, for people that are kind of getting to know hook sizes and stuff, um, we got a little, uh, magnifier and, uh, match the hatch uh, hook chart and so you can kind of you know throw some of these bugs down on this little measurement grid like all right that's a, a 10 millimeter mayfly nymph and we can check it out it's a mayfly nymph because it's got the three tails it's got the short antennas yep. um, and then we're going to flip that card over and all right mayfly nymphs are typically tied to a straight shank hook and 10 millimeters says that that should be a size 18 to a 16 hook and bringing out your box and, you know, just really helping people connect the pieces. Nice. So, M, most abundant. Okay. Um, a, approximate size and profile. Trout don't know if it has three tails or two tails. They can't tell if it's a mayfly or a stonefly. A parachute, I um, mean, a, a pheasant tail or a hair juice is going to get the job done either way most of the time. Right. Um, but, yeah, we're just getting close, right? Right. Close in size and profile. So, M, A. T is trout feeding behavior. Um, you know, you can see a lot of mayfly nymphs and, and go down deep and fish really deep, but if you see the trout then start to porpoise in the surface of the water, kind of thinning right through the surface, well, that behavior tells me they're done with the nymph on the bottom of the river and they're following that food to the surface. They're following an emerger. So then we're going to change our patterns and our approach to where the fish are feeding. So maybe start throwing more of those bars emergers, those RS2s, that are matching that emerger life cycle of the okay. May findings we saw. Finally, uh, C is, is color. Um, we can mix up some colors that are more visible to trout. Blue purples are visible at the greatest depth and distance. Put some flashback on there, make our fly stand out. And then H is half an hour. If I'm not hitting it in half an hour, I'm reassessing my rig. I'm resampling, trying to, to figure it out again. So what you're saying is don't parking lot rig. No, no. Not if you want to catch fish, right? <laughs> yeah, don't just use what's... Uh, I get lucky once in a while. Yeah, what's already tied on your fly rod from a month ago. Yeah. Right. Now let's catch fish every trip to the river. I think that's hard for guys because you get to the river, man, you are anxious just to get your water or your line in the water and start fishing, right? Absolutely. I mean, this process can take like two minutes. I mean, once you get it, it'll be second nature. And I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's about being observant. It is. Right. Yeah. I mean, something's happening. It's been happening long before we got to the river. And so we just kind of join nature where she's at. Yeah. You mentioned something earlier I wanted you to get into and, and I could use help with this. And, and you referenced having an organized fly box. Right. Mine's... As I buy flies, I just stick them in whatever there's an empty slot. Right. And so mine just looks like I dumped them all out and threw them back in. I, th I think that's pretty common, right? Like yeah. You leave the fly shop with all these little dishes of flies and you're like, now what the hell is that? And when do I fish it? Yeah. 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 And uh, this is something you help people with is, is having an organized fly box so you know exactly where to go for what fly. Right. The, the intent's not just to be OCD, it's to save you time on the water. I mean, that's the one thing we don't have enough of is uh, it's time to go fishing. So we don't want to be searching for the right fly. 
while there's a hatch going on and fish feeding in front of us. You want to be there catching those fish. So the way that I organize every box that leaves our shop um, is by the hatch organization method. And uh, we got a, a video that's downloadable, kind of outlining how to do this. But yeah, the way we set up a box is, is page one, one side of the box is all the aquatic flies, all your wet flies. And each row is dedicated to a, to a family of bugs. You got a midge row, mayfly row, caddis, stones, edible others, worms and shrimp and whatnot. And then mirrored on the opposite side of the box, on those same rows are the adult life cycles. You know, your dry midges, your dry mayflies, caddis, stones, etc. So the intent is if you get to the river, you pull up your seine, and like, man, there's a ton of caddis right now. And uh, you can go right to that wet caddis row, to that larva life cycle. And as that hatch progresses throughout the day, the way we show people to organize it is just run your finger across that caddis row and you're onto your emergers. Once those caddis hit the surface of the water, flip that page over. And on the left side of the dry page is your first dry life cycle out of the water all the way through the end of that life of that bug. So, so for guys newer to fly fishing that really don't know anything about bugs, yeah, briefly explain the life cycle. Aquatic insects, 99% um, of their life is happening underwater. Mayflies. And a lot of guys don't realize that. You see, you see a bug flying through the air. Right. Most people have no idea that bug started out at the base of the river. Started yeah. out in the water or a rock. Right? And we yeah. all love fishing the dry flies, right? So we want to fish dry flies every time in the water. Well, trout have much more opportunity to eat them on the bottom of the river. I mean, yeah. they're safe. Yeah. They're hanging out behind the rocks. They don't have to move very much, and all yeah, the food lives there. Don't expend a for lot of energy. Every, is kind of for every out one that, that made it up, that's flying around, there was probably a hundred that were eaten or so. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Um, so explain that, the life cycle. Again, yeah, most of the life of these bugs is happening on the bottom of the river. And it's, uh, you know, this cycle of uh, this bug living on the bottom of the river and growing and growing and growing. And then um, there's going to be a season when each of these bugs is going to kind of have their day in the sun. Yeah. Kind of thinking about it like, uh, like gardening. There's a season when you plant each of your different types of vegetables, and each of them kind of comes ripe yeah. at roughly the same time each yeah. year, right? Same exact thing with bugs. So our blooming olive mayflies, they're going to have six months underwater, kind of growing up, kind of like that seed growing. And then we're going to have our hatch March, April, May. Um, in most uh, sections of the Rockies. Six months later, I mean, they're going to spend about 24 hours out of the water. That's as long as our blooming olives live out of the water. That's they're going to die. <clears throat> Six months later, we get a second half, September, October. But at each point of that life, those trout are going to be keying in. Trout are super savvy investors. So they're going to be hanging out where there's the most calories. And so... When it's the nymph life cycle, those trout are going to be hanging actively on the bottom of the river, feeding on those nymphs. Um, water temperature. That's kind of, they get yeah. the short end of the stick, man. You get 24 hours to, to enjoy the sunlight. Just make love and die. That's, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, it's, it's all right. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so I mean, then, the, yeah, the trout follow those emergers, and as those Mayflies is like D-Day under the water. Water temperature is that trigger that tells that blueing olive in this season it's time to go. Yeah. And if you understand which water temperatures trigger each of these hatches, I mean, a thermometer is like a crystal ball as to when, that, when the dry fly action is going to turn on. So temperature then sends those bugs swimming up out of the water hundreds of thousands at a time. Mass exodus. Yeah. And those trout are gorgeous. Yep. I mean, it's uh, those nymphs are all bunkered down for six months and they're making a break to the safety of the air. So trout are, you know, just going nuts on those emergers. And then uh, out of the water, um, real quick life cycle. Some of our stones will last for a couple weeks. Mayflies, four to 48 hours. Um, real quick life cycle out of the water. But uh, by understanding the characteristics, like, all right, a mayfly done, fresh out of the water, has these smoky colored wings. It has a short tail. You can anticipate, all right, this is where that mayfly is going next. And I know when it's going to be coming back to that water. 
and, and when those dry flies are going to be working again. So understand the life cycle just lets you know when each of those flies in your box is going to be a hot fly. And again, that's something you can help anybody with. The guy from Alabama calls you and says, I fish this river a lot. You right. can go to your database and tell that guy this month, this season, this is what you should be fishing. Exactly. So, yeah, let's say um, someone's down on the White River in, in, in Arkansas and they say, I'm fishing it third week of July. Well, I know I have this database that says all these bugs are present in the White River. They've been sampled there by this college and this federal agency. And I pile all that together and I say, this is where we're at in the life cycle for each of these in this window. And so we're adjusting the size, we're adjusting the colors, we're adjusting the life cycles to match just that. Sweet. It's geeky, man. But that's that's it so works. cool. Yeah. That's, I mean, this is the future of fly fishing. This is where it's going. No, I agree. I mean, I think we've all been to fly shops uh, on a road trip and the guy tells you, well, this is what I'd use and this is what I'd use. And you get out there and you don't catch a darn thing. And so you can't remember which one it was. You got it in your fly box. You're like, uh, which one was it again? I'll just try this one. Yeah. yeah, no, exactly. And sometimes I think those guys are just telling you their favorite fly and not necessarily what's in season. I mean, one of the cool thing, one of the cool things that I've seen Peter do, you know, and, and I think, and I think Chad even, um, messaged me about it on Instagram. You posted a, a box that you're sending out to a client where you had, you know, use these flies from, you know, six o'clock to nine o'clock and then switch to these flies from 10 o'clock to, you know, one o'clock and, yeah. you know, in the evening, you know, and you had a, you even had a timeline on there for them. <laughs> you know, and, and I'm sure you don't sit down and do that for every single one of no. them, but you know, that's just, that's just good customer service. That's oh, right. that's dumbing it down. And, but for guys like me, I think that's so cool. That's yeah. dumb it down this week, these hours, Try these different flies. Yeah, and it's it's that predictable. I mean, it really is. So yeah, it was like during the trico hatch on a section of the South Platte. And yeah, you can set your, your watch to where these bugs are going to be at each point of the day and where those fish are going to be. And yeah, the client, I think, texted me back some photos of like 20-inch rainbows from the canyon. And that, that, that pumps me up. It keeps me going. You mentioned something about a video you have that's available for yeah. folks to purchase. Yeah. Um, talk about that. So some guys like video. Yeah. So it's, it's available on DVD for those that still have a DVD player or digital download. Um, so you can watch it on your iPhone in your truck while you're warming up or at the bar. Um, but it's called creating order in your fly box. Okay. Yeah. Can explain what it is. So it's, it's a mix of entomology and fly identification. So as we talk about those life cycles, you know, we all, we're all starting out with this really disorganized, chaotic fly box of who knows what. Right. And we teach you how to unpack that fly box and sort it into the fly types, then the families, and then the life cycles, and repack it by that hatch organization method. So as we start out with uh, our midges, we go through each of the life cycles and we we animate like these are the natural insects. These are the characteristics that we're going to be looking for on the water that tells us this is a larva. This is a pupa. This is the adult. And then we pause that and we go into our fly box. These are the characteristics of the flies that match this life cycle. Pull them out, pack them. The next life cycle, pull them out, pack them. And we do that all the way through every family of trout food. And so you learn the entomology. You learn the flies that match them. You come out with that book-like encyclopedia of flies all organized in your box. And then on the water, you're just finding the row, following the hatch. And uh, so we, we teach the hatch organization method. Some guys like to maybe have water-specific boxes. I want a lake fly box. I want a tailwater fly box, a river fly box. You show them how to apply that in that setting or a season specific box. Like I only fish spring and fall, or I only fish summer. How do you build a box using that method for the seasons? Mm. So it's, I mean, it's as straightforward and simplified as we can make it. And uh, hopefully you'll know exactly what you're seeing on the water and just start catching more fish. That's really cool. So yeah, guys, you can check out this video, order it from ascentflyfishing.com. Yep, or yeah, riveroracle.com. You can download it there also. 
How about the fly fishing rendezvous? Yeah. Little plug in for that. That's a, it, it, who, it, it, for anybody that hasn't been there, it's a, it's a pretty cool experience. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a, a Rocky Mountain kind of focused fly fishing show. So when we were just, uh, just starting out, we wanted to go to the big show, but I mean, you didn't have a thousand bucks for a booth. Right, so right. we talked to Trout Unlimited and uh, a couple other little startups. I'm like, hey, let's, let's put on a little event. And we rented a little 40 by 40 foot room. and At the Holiday Inn Express. <laughs> it was before. We were at a rec center. Oh, that's first. right. Yeah. yeah. So we had nine, nine companies in this room. And the emphasis is education at the rendezvous. Edu- education and conservation and what's happening here in the Rockies. So I think we had like nine hours of classes on one day. Wow. And 200 people showed up to this 40 by 40 foot room and we're all like snugged in. Shoulder to shoulder. And so, yeah, we've been growing that every year. And uh, we got 10,000 feet, square feet now. Three theaters with like 30 hours of classes over two days. And it's all Rocky Mountain guides and authors and fly yeah. tires and companies. And uh, it's how do you fish our waters? Be successful on our waters. And it's just information freely given. Um, no secret fishing spots, no tweed, no snootiness. Like, you want to know where to catch a golden trout? Here's a map. This is where you go. These are the flies you're going to use. And that's like my mentality for everything. I mean, you can post my mobile if you want to your, your, uh, your <laughs> listeners. I'll, you know, go for it. And they can text me like, this is where I'm fishing. This is what, you know, text me a picture of a bug from the water. This is what that is. This is what the fly is. Like, I'm an open book, and that's what the rendezvous is about, too. And I have actually done that. I have actually texted you a picture before yeah. of a bug. I, <laughs> you know, I was probably more poking fun, but then he comes back and answers me, and I'm like, oh, hey, yeah. <laughs> maybe I'll try that. <laughs> yeah. So the fly fishing rendezvous held in Denver. It is. It's, and, and it's now at the, it, it, you know, it's not in a little 40 by 40 room anymore. It's the, it, it's at the Jefferson County Fairgrounds. Now. Yeah. And I think that's April 28th, 29th. It's the last weekend of April. Right. And uh, is there an entry fee? How do guys, do they need to sign up? So can... yeah, it's uh, you can get tickets in advance on flyfishingrendezvous.com or at the door, but it's 10 bucks. It gets you yeah. in. And then you can bounce around from master certified casting instructions to listening to guys like Pat Dorsey and Landon Marrier talk about fishing our waters. Um, and then, I mean, I'm selling flies for 10 bucks a dozen there. You can gear up. You'd sit there and watch Pat Dorsey tie flies. Yeah. I mean, Rick know, Takahashi, those guys. Yeah. And you go around there. I mean, there's guides from, you know, Northern all, all the way down through the Rockies. You know, there's, there's outfitters that come in there and uh, you can book trips if you want. There's, you know, there's, but you know, the big thing is the education. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's just, it's jam packed with education. Yeah. So that'll, that'll be opening up. Uh, yeah. We're about uh, seven months out and it'll be a great time. Is there a website to go to buy those tickets in advance or just your website? So it'll be flyfishingrendezvous.com. Okay. And we'll have uh, the full lineup of, of classes and fly tires and demos and, um, yeah, I mean, if there's uh, different fly fishing companies that'd like to join us and they hear this, they're welcome to to reach out through the website and, and we'll try to try to get them a spot. And if you get on and sign up for your, I think it's on scentflyfishing.com. If you sign up for your newsletter, you get all that information. There, you right. know, there's there's emails that come out. You know, when Peter does his uh, the uh, classes just kind of around town and stuff. Um, he posts it up when he does his pop up fly sales. You know, you'll get an email that this is coming up. Um, Follow him on Instagram at, you know, at Ascent Fly Fishing. Appreciate what you do, Peter. Hey, thanks for having me on. Thanks for coming on the podcast. We got some fish to catch. We need to redeem ourselves from yesterday. We do. Some some slime Um, on our hands. So I want to give a shout out to uh, Alex. Yep. Uh, Um, Terriel Outfitters. Um, You know, he's provided us the lodging here. Um, He's a full service fly shop and fair play. But, uh, you know, the shop carries a full line of, you know, there's TFO rods and um, Reddington and uh, is, I think it's Echo. Echo Hatch Reels. Hatch, hatch, hatch Reels. Uh, so they get some flies from a pretty cool company called Ascent Fly yeah, Fishing. Yeah, he does. <laughs> he does. He buys some flies from there. He's got, he, you know, he's got. I think know, he said he has 20,000 flies or something in the shop. Yeah, right you now. go in and, and, you know, he's got flow rates, water temperatures, all that kind of stuff posted up in the shop. So, you know, you don't even have to go in and buy anything. Just come in and, 
you know, BS and he'll, you know, they'll tell, it's like Peter. I mean, they'll tell you what's working, yeah. you know, yeah. if you don't want to buy a trip, but, you know, um, do half day and full day trips and, and, uh, you know, you get a, once in a while, if you request it, you get a beautiful bearded guide to, uh, <laughs> to go with you. And, Majestic. Uh, I mean, I, I won't, uh, you know, reveal who that is, but, you know, you can request it. He's a handsome dude, but location wise, this is a good place for fly fishing. Yeah. You know, right above South Park, Spinney and Tara the yep. Dream Streamer. Yep, and, and we we can you know, we're we're licensed to run trips on the Dream Stream. Uh we uh we have we have private stretches of the middle fork. We have uh when the when the waters are high, um early in the summer, we've got private lakes that we have access to. Um and it's good fishing. So guys, if you've ever wanted to check out fly fishing in Colorado, this is the place. Terry All Outfitters. Uh, is there a website? Uh, TerryAllOutfitters.com. Um, he's on Instagram too. Uh, the business is at Terry All Outfitters. Um, Alex's personal Instagram page is, I think it's at South Park Fly Freak. Okay. Um, you know, and he, he posts a lot of pictures on there and, and, you know, client pictures, you know, what, what, when we don't have clients, we go out and fish ourselves, and we post pictures of that. And These guys were showing me pictures last night, and I'm expecting to go catch some fish like that today. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, just one fish is going to be bigger than the fish we caught yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get at it. Guys, thanks for listening, yep. and stay gritty. Although our native trout species are resilient fish, they are facing an uphill battle. Historically, there were 28 species of trout that lived in our waters, but three of those are extinct. According to Trout Unlimited's research, 13 of the remaining 25 species occupy less than 25% of their historic range. Six are listed as either threatened or endangered. Renowned conservationist Shane Mahoney recently said, quote, The natural resources in our country is what makes our country so great. We can have mountains, and we can have streams, and we can have forests. But if there's nothing living in them, they're meaningless. I agree. Let's not forget that our right to fish depends on habitat. Let's be good stewards of our fisheries and fight to protect and preserve our public lands. Our wildlife habitat depends on it.